if you are a graduate in chemistry or post graduate in chemistry then you are in luck because everybody needs you now this is not me saying this is every industry shouting over the head saying that we need a chemistry specialist or a, a, a chemistry post graduate who can help us be it pharmaceuticals be, be it paints industry be it um, fuel industry be it the government but today i'm here to talk about the government because the government is the biggest merchant in our country the biggest business in our country your country any country is government so if you want to earn a lot of money that too with a stable job then of course government job is one of the most sought after jobs but the problem with government jobs is they are too rare too competitive and lack of information right so i will address the lack of information part where i can't help with the competition part for that you have to become better and for that also i'll give you clues in this video so today i am on a mission to help you understand how the government hires chemistry graduates and post graduates and how can you as a rasayanika subscriber succeed in the government sector now to start with there are 5 to 7 jobs which are highly paid and highly sought after but i have a list of 10 which will help you get started as a fresher or an experienced candidate now whatever you do remember that government jobs are rare so if you spot one apply quick and if you have not spotted yet Watch this video till the end because you will know what kind of qualification, experience, and expertise you'll require to get into the government. Okay, now, like I said in the beginning, government is the biggest business for our country. Which is the biggest headache of our government? Tell me in the comment section. I think you have already guessed it, right? That is defense. Defense is the biggest headache of any government in any country, and that is where, my dear friend, the entire defense weapons is based out of. chemicals right mostly chemicals so that is where your biggest employer in government in india is drdo that is defense research and development organization and it comes under ministry of defense now your salary range here will be in between 1 lakh 30000 to 1 lakh 50000 per month and plus allowances and you know Uh, they get up to one lakh fifty thousand also when you include all the allowances, and the total annual package can actually exceed twenty five to thirty lakhs for a senior scientist. So that's a huge, big uh, package as we speak. And at the same time, you know uh, the responsibilities also are very challenging. Like you can lead cutting edge defense research involving explosives, propellants. chemicals biological defense material science for example drdo chemists are developing high energy fuels advanced materials corrosion prevention and stealth coatings now all of this is chemistry right so they manage r&d products they uh, guide the junior scientists and you can contribute to strategic defense technology you can understand how other developed countries have developed their defense technology and how can you implement it in india by Uh, you know, uh, learning all of this. So that is where these are the key responsibilities for you as a junior or a senior scientist. But now coming to it, what kind of qualification re you require to get into DRDO? The easiest and the most acceptable is PhD. Okay, even though you are a MTech or MSc, you still have a chance. But you will start as a JRF. But as a PhD, you can actually get in directly. But if you are a master's, you can actually do your PhD from DRDO. The only downside for DRDO is you won't have a public life. You can't be flaunting everywhere that you are from DRDO and what work you're doing because actually you are working on confidential projects. So confidential projects have a problem that you cannot really go ahead and uh, flaunt about it. But hey, that's a small downside for the upside that you're working for the government and you're contributing towards your country. So I think that's a great achievement right so you know you should have done a bsc msc mtech or phd in organic chemistry in organic chemistry physical chemistry or any type of materials uh, chemistry related um, uh, project you should have done you should have several years of experience research experience and as a entry level scientist you can get in as a scientist b and that requires a masters in chemistry but you need a gate score so don't forget to write the gate exam now higher level position demands a stronger research publication record and experience and you need security clearance also so you should not have got involved in any kind of criminal activities if you want to get into drdo keep that in mind so 
Now defense is a very sensitive um, type of job so that is why security clearance is required so make sure that doesn't happen. Now coming to the second type of job which you can work under the government and that is ISRO. Indian Space Research Organization ISRO under the Department of Space. You can work as a scientist or an engineer, contribute towards nation building, contribute towards every field in our country using your science. Okay. Now this is a really fulfilling job. The salary ranges up to 80,000 rupees per month that is the entry level and it can go up to 2 lakh rupees per month for the higher level. Now, the in hand uh, salary for a fresh ISRO scientist which is SC is around 72,000 including allowances and you get um, residency as well as but the thing is these will be always in the remote places and uh, Sometimes it can be in South India because most of the ISRO work is happening in South India where it is headquartered. Now the key responsibilities which you will have is working on research and development for rocket propellants, polymers, advanced materials, chemical analysis and you will be involved in space mission. So if space excites you, if, if astronomy excites you, this is the place to be in. ISRO chemists will contribute to propellant chemistry, material science, fuel analysis for launch vehicles and satellites. That is why now you need a PhD here as well. So most of the government jobs you will need a PhD or a M.Tech in chemistry or chemical engineering. Now you should have a specialization here because a general chemistry will not work. You need a specialization in propulsion technology, materials, polymer chemistry. And most of the times I've seen postdocs who go abroad, learn it and come back, get a better job. So that's one idea you can have. Now, entry via ISRO route is through central recruitment. That is a UPSC and you need to have a strong academic re record and gate score as well. Again, you should not get involved in any kind of criminal activities and that can, uh, you know, stop your dreams from coming true under ISRO. Now, higher positions actually require PhD and extensive experience in aerospace materials and fuel chemistry. So you need to do specialization in PhD in any of these topics. Now, the third most in-demand job in government is under the Atomic Energy, Department of Atomic Energy, which is BARC. Now, BARC stands for Baba Atomic Research Center. Now, you can become a scientific officer in chemistry or nuclear science. The salary ranges from 56,000 to 177,000. Again, you won't have a social public life. As a scientist, you will be working in a confidential project, so you cannot actually disclose to the pub general public. You'll be conducting nuclear chemistry and radiochemistry research. You'll be managing nuclear materials and isotopes, and you'll be ensuring in environmental safety in nuclear facilities. Now, all of this and on the top of it, imagine you are contributing towards the government, you are contributing towards your country, and of course, you are contributing towards cleaner energy instead of the coal-based energy. So it's a big, big um, challenge as well as a big um, achievement as well so you can work on these but the downside is not just the social life but also radioactivity because you're working in a radioactive environment you're more prone to cancer and any other any other such diseases so occupational hazards are high if you're working in the BARC but hey that should not discourage you the the organization always takes a lot of uh, uh, precautions. So it's not that you will um, fall sick, but definitely that's a downside. Now, the next type of job which you can work is in ONGC. Now, you must have heard of ONGC. That is Oil and Natural Gas Corporation. It is a leading public sector unit under the Petroleum Department. Now, this particular uh, ONGC job, so you, the, the job which you will get is Chief Chemist or Senior Manager in Chemistry. Your salary will range in between 50 lakhs to 30 lakhs per annum. One of the highest paid jobs are in ONCC. A very good work-life balance and you start at 70 to 80,000 rupees salary. It goes up to 30 lakh rupees per month, per year. And the key re responsibilities will be overseeing oil fields and quality control operations. So one thing you should remember is these kind of jobs are not in the metros. These kind of jobs are not in big cities. These will be always in the oil fuel drilling stations, which is always far from the bigger cities. So that's something you should keep in mind. Now, as a chief chemist or a manager, you'll be coordinating laboratory teams and R&D projects to improve refinery processing, 
fuel quality and chemical enhanced oil recovery techniques and you will be advising the government as well as the management on corrosion control and waste treatment in ONGC facilities. Now what do you need? You need a qualification of MSc in chemistry, applied chemistry, a good GATE score and typically above 60% marks and whenever the opening comes, it comes on Rasainika. So all these openings which I told you, it comes in Rasainika, you can apply and you can get a job. So now higher managerial post requires extensive lab experience and field experience up to 10 to 15 years and that of course you can get help once you have got in. So I've never seen a person who has got into these jobs who leaves these jobs, they just retire from these jobs. That's the kind of the power of these jobs, they're really, really highly rewarding and contributes towards the nation building. The fifth type of job in the government is again Indian Oil Corporation. Uh, the job which we have seen is quality control officer. Salary is in between 6 to 16.8 lakhs. Again, the responsibilities are similar. Uh, you will be working on chemical analysis on petroleum samples to verify if they meet the BIS uh, standards. And the, uh, the qualification again will be masters in chemistry or masters in organic chemistry and various analytical techniques you should know such as chromatography, spectroscopy, uh, standards such as ISO, ASTM methods and all that, right? Now this is the fifth type of job. Now coming to the sixth one which we have is CSIR senior scientist. Now this is something which is again in the government like NCL, IICT. There you can earn in between 1 lakh to 1.8 lakhs. The salary, is, starting salary is around 80,000. You join as a scientist E or F and it keeps growing as over the period of years. Now you will be leading top chemical research projects like drug discovery, catalysis, polymers and materials. And as a scientist, you'll be planning, executing research programs, publishing in journal, uh, patenting new technologies and often collaborating with the industry. Now, the minimum qualification required will be no doubt only and only PhD in chemistry. So, you as a fresh PhD, um, uh, you will earn a little lesser, but slowly it grows. And you, you will have to do a specialization in either catalysis, organic synthesis, nanochemistry, or anything which is related or trending such as AIML in drug discovery. Now, the seventh type of job which you can get is a forensic scientist in the CFSL and SFSL. Now, Central Forensic Science Laboratories under the Ministry of Home Affairs or State Forensic Science Labs are there where you solve crimes. You become the Sherlock Holmes of the entire world. So what exactly you do? The chemical analysis of the crime scene will come. You, the evidence will come. You have to corroborate. You have to understand such as narcotics, toxins, explosives, residues from arsons, dyes. Sometimes food, um, you know, such uh, evidence will also come. So you have to analyze. You have to maintain a chain of custody. You have to maintain the quality assurance protocols. And you may have to testify in courts also as a uh, forensic scientist. So again, you need a MSc in chemistry or forensic science for this. The eighth type of job, again, very highly rewarding job you can get through UPSC. That is drug inspector or drug control officer under CDSCO. Now, CDSCO stands for Central Drug Standard Control Organization. The salary ranges in between 50,000 to 80,000 starting, goes up to 15, 20 lakhs also. But you have a lot of travel involved here. You have to go to pharmaceutical companies as a drug inspector. You have to check if they're complying with the Drugs and Cosmetics Act. You have to test the drug samples. You have to send the samples to the um, lab and then you have to see substandards, spurious drugs and assist in prosecuting the violence. So all of that happens in your um, drug inspector. Now the ninth type of job is in the pollution control. Again, a very important impactful job where you can advise the government and the environmental ministry of environment to um, reduce the pollution, right? So the salary again is highly rewarding, starts at 50,000, goes up to 1,20,000 initially and then it explodes up to 20 lakhs also now minimum qualification required here would be msc in chemistry or environmental science now the 10th highest paying job of course is not very lucrative but yes it is a government job very high and very high quality work-life balance and that's a professor of chemistry in iits or any of the universities the salary ranges in between 1 lakh per month to 1 lakh 80 thousand per month with the seventh uh, pay commission coming in, you are you can actually earn more than two lakhs per annum uh, per month. Also, that's around twenty five lakhs per annum. Now, these are the t top ten jobs which you can get in the government. Now, tell me in the comment section which one would you like to um, do, and I will make a separate video particularly on that particular job because this was a long video so i just told you small summaries if you want more details about any particular job if you have any questions 
put them down in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to Rasayniga because all things chemistry happens here. So thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining and keep watching Rasayniga. All the best.